Hey guys, Nick the Nutter Buster. Today we're going to be talking about the JX3 hybrid saddle. Uh, this video is long overdue. It was, I guess, not this past February, but the February before at Saddle Palooza. I met with John, uh, got to meet him in person, hang out with him, drink a few beers, swap stories. Uh, awesome dude. Loved talking with him. Uh, got to see him demo his JX3. Loved it, and he was kind enough that uh, he sent me one. Uh, and then he asked me, he's like, just use it, tell me what you think about it, give me some feedback on it, and, you know, when you get ready, if you want to do a video, do a video. Um, and I've kind of taken a little bit longer to do that, because to be honest, the JX3 for me is, it was a very interesting concept, but it was one that took a little bit of getting used to, um, and it took me a while to hunt out of it before I got comfortable enough with it that I felt like I could speak, um, I guess confidently on it feel like I knew what I was talking about um, and it took it was a longer learning curve because I was hunting out of a kite and I've been playing with tree hoppers and trophy line tree saddles all kind of stuff when you do the gear reviews and you're trying to use a lot of different gear so that you can give feedback on it it just it takes you longer than if you pick a system and stick with it um, and what's different about it is the JX3 is first impressions that people have of it, right, is that it's just huge, and it's heavy, right, uh, compared to a regular saddle, and to me, if you're comparing it to a saddle, it's, it's not, it's not a saddle, in my mind, um, it's not a tree stand, it's, it's, it's own thing, it's kind of based off of the Ogito's web, um, if I, I first learned about that reading, uh, Robert Shepard's book. He talked about hunting out of a homemade stand and how the closest thing on the market was a um, Guido's web, right? So you've got your backrest and you've got a firm seat on it. You're sitting basically in, in what's like an adjustable beach chair kind of up in the tree. It is similar to a saddle in that you're attached to the tree with a tether and you have a bridge and you can swing around the tree and all that stuff, but uh, it's very different. It offers some benefits that you don't get with a saddle. And, and there's some, I don't really want to call them drawbacks, it's just, it's different, okay? If you approach this with a saddle mentality, like I did at first, you're going to be a little bit frustrated with it. Uh, when you think of it as just, like if you could wipe all preconceived notions of saddles and tree stands and quit trying to shove it into one of those categories, I, I think there's a lot of people that would be happy with it. And I know for me, once I finally just stopped thinking of it as a saddle, a stand, I just started thinking of it as the JX3 and how to use it and what it does well, uh, I, I got very happy with it. So I'll just give you an overview for those of you who haven't seen it. The JX3 is a really neat concept. Basically, you have a, a back panel, all right? You have a Molly backrest, what they use in the military to put their frame packs on. That's the foundation of the system, right? So what that does is it gives you the ability, it basically, it's a pack, okay? You, you have a, a stand that's built into a frame pack or a frame pack that's built into a stand, however you want to think of it. So that has some, some interesting benefits to it, right? One is that this is 10 pounds, roughly. Um, and this is kind of a prototype version that he sent me. This is the infamous skinny um, that you may have heard about on the forums. I think there's only one other just like this. Um, the only real difference is that it's a little bit narrower than a standard production model. Um, no idea if that's in the works if John's going to make it. Don't ask me. Probably don't ask him because he's busy selling the fire out of the, uh, the standard ones. But it, who knows, maybe. Uh, but roughly 10 pounds. But when you put it on, 10 pounds sounds heavy when you're used to saddles that weigh a pound or two but the neat thing since you have the frame pack you put it on right you have a, a two inch waist belt you have chest straps you have adjustable backpack straps and it disappears you can put all that weight on your hips uh, you can put sticks on it you can pack meat on it um, it's real easy to carry your layers like heavy winter layers and everything you can either sandwich them in between the seat or you can use, you can see on the back of it, those two straps that kind of come in a V. Um, those serve to help keep the seat folded up, but they also, when you sit in it, they turn into your leg straps when you're sitting and climbing in it. Uh, so that's something that's interesting right there. Like right off the bat, people say, oh, it's heavy. Well, what does your frame pack weigh? 
know, if you're using a frame pack, uh, I think you'll get more benefit out of this. I'm not really a frame pack guy, um, but there are benefits to it, right? If you're spending a lot of time on your feet and you're carrying a little bit heavier load, if you like to carry full size sticks or, or even the compact sticks, wild edge steps, if you're carrying a lot of metal and you're not like me and you're not usually rolling out with just a roll of carbon fiber bolts, um, if you got to carry a lot of water, that is something down here. I used this a lot last year in the early season because it was really easy to put a three liter hydration bladder because you will right now, we got two weeks, no, at one week, next weekend, a week from today, will be opening day of bow season. Um, it's 85 degrees right now in South Alabama. You will burn through water walking through the woods. So you can carry that water weight, you can carry clothing weight, you can carry stick weights, everything. You can tighten that waist belt up, get everything adjusted. It's nice, you've got that mesh. Uh, so you're not, you know, your back doesn't sweat as bad. It kind of lets you breathe, okay? It's very comfortable. And you've also got, I don't know if you can see it, but between the mesh and the, the frame of the pack, you've got kind of a handy little pocket right there that you can stash some goodies. I've used that to, you know, stick a granola bar or a compass or a headlamp or whatever, just something that you want to get to easy and get to it right there. Uh, when you pack stuff, you can see, you can strap like layers and stuff like that, a jacket you can roll up and just kind of wedge up in there. Um, I've done that with sticks too on just short hikes, just set them there. But you have on the frame, it comes with lashing straps, okay? Now you can see those one inch straps and you've got your G hooks. So you can strap whatever. Like I've, I've quartered out deer with this. It works really, really well for that. Um, so that's something you have to consider when you look at people like, oh, it's heavy. Yeah, but weigh your frame pack, weigh your saddle, and get back to me on that. Uh, it's really not that big of a difference. And then especially if you're carrying extra stuff, this is what really uh, kind of negates that perceived weight disadvantage. Is if you're going to be in this for a long period of time, if you're going to saddle hunt for a long period of time. Um, things that people carry to make that more pleasant, knee pads okay um platforms uh back bands add all those up add it to your frame pack add it to your saddle tell me what the weight difference is on this thing you don't have your knees against the tree ever you have this adjustable fork right here that sits against the tree we'll show you how that works so that's that's not a thing uh there's no knee pressure there's no foot pressure because you're seated you're not leaning I can, I can hunt off of just grade eight steel bolts up in a tree all day. There's no foot discomfort because you're, you're this big cushy mesh, you know, kind of springy seat is taking all of your weight and it just kind of cups your butt. Um, super comfortable. It's like sitting in a beach chair. So you don't have all those things. So take your saddle system. Like I can put this 10 pounds, add an additional pound for a tree hopper drilling bolts, I can be hunting. And the neat thing about this, the other thing that it does, in addition to being comfortable up in a tree, which is I think the thing that's immediately obvious, right? A lot of people talk about, oh, it's super, super comfortable. And you can kind of tell looking at the pictures of it and, and we'll kind of go over it in a little bit, but the comfort thing to me is that's been covered enough. There's like, yeah, I get it. It's, it's comfortable. It's got a big padded backrest. It's got a big, you know, or not padded, but a big springy backrest, big springy seat. Uh, but the versatility of it, all the things that it can do, just kind of rolled into one neat little package, is to me what really sets it apart. Just the innovation to it, it's, it's different. There's not a lot of different anymore in the saddle hunting world. Everybody's just kind of, we've hit that point, I think, where we're kind of in the race to the bottom, right? Just just me tooing, and the prices are coming down a little bit. Um, you know, can we shave a couple ounces here or there like this? is about the most innovative product I've looked at in saddle hunting for, you know, a while. I don't think anything has really come out that, that touches this. Um, but what you can do in addition to it just being comfortable and it being an awesome weight bearing system, a pack, right? Uh, it's a ground chair. It's actually a really nice ground chair. So we're going to kind of change the camera angle a little bit. Last time I filmed this video, I messed it up. So y'all bear with me. Hashtag quality camera work. Okay, so you can use this on the ground. And what I do, you see I've already got my bridge set up on the tree. Okay, so it's real easy. 
if you use carabiners on your bridge, you just take those two carabiners off. Okay. We're going to take this seat. We can open it up. And you'll notice, come in a little bit closer. So this is basically, this is the sling part of your saddle, right? This is, you can actually see it really good from this angle. You can see this is basically your bridge loops. You can see those two pieces of webbing. They go across the bottom of the seat, right? The, this, this mesh, this is just for comfort. If, if something goes south and you were to fall or something, this is what's keeping you up in the tree. And it wraps around you. And you can see it kind of comes out the other side, right? Okay. And then you've also got your two-inch webbing waist belt. So you're in this thing pretty good. You can see that two-inch webbing that goes around behind the back. The two-inch webbing, that's the question that I've got from some people is, is it safe? Yeah, it's using the same, whatever, 8,000-pound test webbing that every other saddle is using to keep you safe up in a tree, right? And it's got about as much as most of them. Um, Anderson-type slings have twice as much. Most saddles... You're being held up by them two pieces of two inch webbing that's what's doing heavy lifting but anyway you'll see here you have two loops all right this long loop is what you'll use to clip into your bridge when you're up in the tree and these short loops are what you'll use if you want to ground hunt um, i actually had a pretty good bit of success i used to ground hunt a lot and i kind of got away from it and then last year i kind of got back to it because of the ax3 because uh, it's so easy it's, it's just an option that you always have available to you is you can always pop up for a quick ground hunt and you basically just going to clip in with those carabiners clip into those short loops and then you have some loops down here at the bottom of your chair okay see we have a ground seat lower that camera angle for you guys just a teeny bit more all right you can see we got a ground seat and it keeps you up off the ground just a teeny bit you've got these metal brackets okay right here and you have them right here and right here so it keeps you up off the ground and this is great I've actually used this as a camp chair used it in the bottom of a john boat and a canoe very comfortable and you can adjust the lean once you're in it you can sit up relatively straight or you can lean that bad boy back and you can hunt just like that and that's a uh, that's really super comfortable your butt stays dry you're low to the ground if you got a gun or a crossbow what's up bud uh, super nice okay then when you go to put it on a tree let's see. you'll use the longer loops okay and now it is something i can already hear you guys saying it y'all are watching this video and you're saying there's just a lot going on uh, and there is it's it's something that had a little bit of a learning curve to me for how to um, handle all the straps and it is a little confusing because they're all black straps i think you might could alleviate that some um, something I've, I've mentioned before just talking to some different guys if you had different color straps you know if you had a mix of gray and brown and black um, color coding those straps might make that a little bit easier i've thought about doing that for myself just color coding the straps um, but you can see that didn't take too long to pack up no worse than a you know a lock on or a summit or really a lot of guys saddle systems they can't get packed up that quick I've seen people struggling with their saddles give us a little camera angle adjustment hey I need a camera person y'all need one bad um, but when you climb with it you can either climb or something that I did a few times last year is I set it up just like I'm going to set it up here. Just set it up on the ground. Uh, you can see it's got a lineman's belt, right? 
I'm not going to show you guys how a lineman's belt works today. There's other videos out there on that. Um, but you'd climb with it. When you would get ready to climb, you'd walk up to the base of the tree, and you reach back there, you hit them straps, undo them, you can kind of reach between your legs and clip in. So it does have uh, leg loops. And then you actually have, it's kind of like you're wearing a full body harness, which is actually kind of cool because like uh, Alabama state regulation does technically specify that you have to have a full body harness. So if you're hunting in an area where they're funny about stuff like that, this is at this point a full body harness, right? You got shoulder straps, you got leg straps, you got a waist strap, everything. But you'd climb up the tree, once you get where you are, set your tether high. I set it above head high, which is higher than I set it with a regular saddle. And then basically all that you would do, this thing hangs on a hook that seat does. I don't know if y'all can see that, but it's got a hook right there that it's sitting on. When you get ready to deploy your seat, all you do is you lift up, boom, it folds down. Easy peasy. Then you'll take them long loops and you'll just clip them into your bridge. Um, I set my tether a little over head high and then I like the V on my bridge to be at about my chest level. And that usually gets me about right. Now this part feels a little weird when you're 30 foot up doing it for the first time. But you basically, once you're sure that your bridge is hooked up, I like to go ahead and loosen my waist belt a little bit. Usually at this point you'd be leaning back in your linemen's Go ahead and loosen all your straps because you're fixing to sit and be comfy. Um, I'll loosen the shoulder straps up. And then you basically, you just sit down and you lean back. All right, and it puts you in the tree. You got this fork you can adjust and bring out. So you can see my knees, they don't touch the tree. You can see I'm leaning back. Um, you can take these shoulder straps, you can unhook them. You can flip them up over. All right, a lot of times I'll go ahead, loosen the leg loops all the way, loosen the waist belt all the way. That way I can just kind of pivot a little better. Get everything kind of dialed in. It takes a second. The more you hunt with it, the more you get used to it, getting it dialed in. But uh, that's about it. That's about how we want to be. And then you can see it's very easy with that fork in the tree. You turn. Look behind you. Not make any noise, really steady, controlled movements, which is nice. Uh, if you want to swing around the tree, you push off, plant that fork somewhere different. Um, it is, John is a lot better at it when you watch his videos. He's been using it for a long time. Uh, he's a little better than me about getting full movement around a tree, but really, you can do a lot just on one side of the tree just with that fork. You can do a lot just leaning left and right. Um, if you're gun hunting, you, you can shoot any deer you need just, just swinging like that. Uh, bow hunting, I did have a deer come out last year on my right hand side. It's, it's it, when you're new to it, it's a little different. Especially if you're like me and you come from several years of saddle hunting and you've done got used to that. You do have a backrest here. Um, I do recommend to keep it, I like to lean back in it one just because this is super like stupid comfortable sitting like this it feels like you need to be sitting here drinking a beer watching a football game with your buddies but when it comes time to do what it's time to do you can sit up and that's back behind you and you're not restricted you don't feel that backrest up against you okay and you can shoot and you can turn over and you can you're in a saddle if you have your waist belt and everything like that like you can stand up and you can lean and you can make you know all those same type shots um takes a little bit to learn to trust it just like a saddle it is a learning curve if you're used to a saddle and you think oh i got this you're gonna have a learning curve or at least i did um, but the benefit is you can sit there on these all-day rut sits you can lean back like this and dude uh, basically you can stay there until you get hungry or you get bored it don't really matter you can see like this right there that fork slips on that tree a little bit and it mounts you're not going nowhere um, super comfortable no knee pads you can sit there I mean I've thought we've messed around before uh, 
with with like some sort of a, a system where you could stretch your legs out like that like hang a strap on the back side of the tree you can see my feet everything's in here so there's no foot pressure you can sit up here and i got flip-flops on you can sit in flip-flops and you can hunt out this thing which is pretty awesome like the only thing that you need he's got some accessory straps right here like just give me a beer koozie you know beer on this side coffee on this side you know and then then maybe some Deanna sausages could sit right there between my legs and you know you could stay up in the tree for a week if you wanted to just like this when it comes time to shoot a deer you just kind of sit up and you got really smooth controlled movements to let you shoot um, I love it when you get ready to come back down you just kind of reverse the process put your shoulder straps back on Tighten everything back up, your waist belt and your leg loops and all that. Just the same stuff you would if you were going to be climbing, you know, get your lineman stuck out, put it around the tree. Adjust your fork. And you just take your bridge off. And then the only thing is, it's a little goofy. What's your bridge loops? Okay. You kind of have to push them back and tuck them. And that can be a little, little weird. And there's a certain amount of practice that's required to get to where you can hook that hook there on the back. But you can see it's not hard at all once you get down at the base of the tree if you want to walk out. You know, if you're packing sticks on it or something, you'd have to take this off, put your sticks on it. But hey, same thing with your backpack, you know. Um, and I have not quite mastered. I've seen guys who can reach back there and put them leg loops back up. I can take the leg loops off and put them on without taking the pack off, but when it comes time to re-engage them, it helps to take it off. But just like that, you are ready to rock. Um, there's a really neat pack that I've been using with this. John actually sent it to me as a courtesy. Uh, I'm not sure if he has plans to make something like it similar. But there's a really neat flat molly pack. Like a hydration pouch. That nestles perfectly between the backrest and the seat. And then you can see it's set up. You got your... Uh, I say you have it on there. I may have knocked it off. Sure did. Knocked my up. Oh, nope, there it is. There's my hydration bladder clip. Um, this is this is a awesome. If you're going to be out in the woods all day, um, I used this a lot last September hog hunting because by hog hunt I'm usually hunting all day, and I'm on the move constantly. Just the whole time you're walking looking for pigs, uh, and when you get ready for lunch, you want to sit down, relax for an hour before you keep moving. This is an awesome ground chair. If you see a spot where you're like, okay, there's some really good sign here, or maybe like I had a hunt last year where I could hear pigs off in the marsh. I couldn't get to them, but I could hear them. And I could see where they'd been rooting at the edge of the high ground that I was walking. I said, well, I'll sit here for a couple hours and see if they come up. And you can just, boom, take it out and have a ground seat. Um, you can hook it up to the tree like we did if you don't want to sit all the way down on the ground. If there's vegetation uh, that you need to be able to see over, you can sit up a little bit higher. Uh, if you want to climb a tree and hunt 30 foot, whether you want to hunt 3 inches off the ground or 30 foot off the ground, the JH3, you can do it. You can do it comfortably. And then when you shoot something, you got a frame pack built in so that you can haul them out. Uh, sticks, heavy winter clothes, whatever. When you look at everything that it can do, it, it's, a, it's a stupid good idea and a stupid good deal when it comes to the weight that you're packing and what you can do with it. Um, just super super versatile like i said it's it's kind of hard to pigeonhole it and and describe it because it's just its own little thing uh i really enjoyed hunting out of it last year i didn't get as much time in it as i wished um but i loved it y'all check it out and we'll see y'all next time <laughs>